What is going on guys and girls? Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be doing a Q&A for you guys. It has been forever since I've done a Q&A. Uh, I think, I don't actually, have I even done a Q&A? I know I did a reading, uh, hate comments and mean comment video, but I don't know if I've ever done, actually done a Q&A on my channel. So here we are guys. I posted on Instagram. I got a good few questions here. Um, you know, luckily most of them are actually not just like open-ended questions. So like I actually have to like really think about it. So I'm really excited to do this for you guys. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and just show everybody who asked me questions all right here on the screen. Um, and then yeah, we'll, we'll be able to go right into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and read over these. I'm gonna try and feature you guys on the screen. My editing software doesn't let me like input images on the screen. I know it's stupid, like I can but it'll like stop the video. So however I go about this, either way guys, I'm gonna feature you guys on this video uh, because I really appreciate you guys asking me questions and just being involved. So here we are, let's go ahead and get right into the questions. You guys definitely went beast mode for me and I thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate it. So here we are right here. The first question comes from the Full Send Ninja. He asks me, would you ever want to be an IFBB pro? Now, this is a good question. Uh, I definitely want to compete in my life. I don't know if I want to go pro, and here's why. Most of, if not everybody in, in the IFBB is doing steroids or on something, whether it's SARM steroids uh, or something else that they consider not to be steroids. Either, either way, they're on something and they're using something to help them. So, you know, I would love to become an IFBB pro naturally, but in regards to doing it uh, unnatural, no, I do not plan to, um, but I would love to. So yeah, that's definitely a goal maybe I could set in the future. Uh, I'm not closing that door, uh, but I'm not gonna open it anytime soon. Alrighty, so the next question we have is from Fatherless, and it says, how do you properly do intermittent fasting and fasted cardio? So. That's a good question. I don't, there's not like a proper way because intermittent fasting basically is you just pick a, you just pick a window and you just don't eat. So say you don't want to eat breakfast and you want to go all the way till lunchtime, you, you get up at seven o'clock, don't eat from seven until 12 or like 1 p.m. Like intermittent fasting, there's no proper way to really do it. So all you do is just pick a time that you don't want to eat and you don't eat. In regards to fasted cardio, it also isn't very complicated either. Uh, you just don't eat at the end of the day. You just do cardio and you just don't eat food. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Next question is from Tele Kiz. Kizzes, I think I say, I think I said your name right, Tele Kiz. Uh, advice for getting rid of pimples on your back and shoulders because it kills the aesthetics. Yes, I was, I've not always been, you know, clean skin. I used to have um, back knee. I hated even calling it back knee, but I used to have pimples on my back and it was just due to not properly um, scrubbing my back. What you use to get rid of back knee and anything is, it all comes down to skincare, but preferably for your back, you're gonna wanna use a back scrubber. And all it is is just a loofah basically that you're able to rub on your back. That's it, get a back scrubber, get the one that has the rough bristles and you'll be good my man because I used to have acne on my back. I still have a little bit not enough to see from far away, but if you get close enough, you definitely can see that I have a little bit of pimples on my back, uh, but nothing like it was before. It was definitely getting there with the back knee, uh, at least at least in my opinion, but I can be kind of hard on myself or be like a, you know, a very strict judge. So uh, yeah, but get a, a back scrubber and then overall just for pimples, cause like, you know, I'll get them right here. Like there's one right here that's about to go away on my arm from shaving. Just use a loofah. You have to constantly exfoliate, at least for me, I have to exfoliate every single day, use no lotions at all and use body wash. So just keep washing your skin, keep scrubbing your skin and really just comes down to being super clean and really anal about your skincare. This is from my friend Isabel and she says, how you get such a fat ass with a P-H-A-T-T-T-T-T. -T 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 -T. Uh, you know, honestly, all jokes aside, to be like serious, actually, in regards to my glutes, it is purely genetic and uh, like me and my family have gone over. I was like, hey, like, it seems like for me, like squatting and like, you know, training my legs is like super easy. And my parents were like, well, yeah, I mean, like, look at your family. Uh, like, you know, there's not a single person in our family, we're pretty sure that has a flat butt. So um, yeah, so genetic, uh, but thank you for the funny, for the funny comment. And then also just training, just training and training and training. And that's how I've 
Got in my fat ass, Izzy. All right, so next question is going to be from Aguilar Fitness 1996. I think that's how I say your name. What's better to have? And I don't. He said, "What's better to have?" And I, and I, I don't. I don't see what he means. Uh, I am not sure what he means in regards to what's better to have. Uh, so yeah, uh, next question, Eric. I believe um, it's when are you getting shredded? I am honestly right now actually cutting currently. I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing cardio every single day for 47 minutes uh, for endurance training, which I'm starting to gravitate away from because doing you know 47 minutes on the incline treadmill or any kind of endurance movement like that can actually lead to you know muscle loss, which is you know you have to have some muscle loss when you cut. But I'm trying to minimize the amount of muscle loss that I have, so I'm doing more resistance, uh, cardio-based things, things where I'm holding weight in my hands, things where I have heavy he heavy weight to stimulate the muscle, but also hit the cardiovascular system and get that fat burn. So. I am currently trying to get shredded right now. Uh, it's been paying off. My waist has gone down like two or three inches already. My belt's loose on me when I'm squatting now. I can fit into a pair of shorts that I couldn't fit into uh, basically all of this year. So, and e even into like last, uh, the ending of last year. So things are working out really well. I'm getting lean and it feels really good. Alrighty, so we're moving into another question here from Michael Chang 768 and Michael actually asked four questions, so I'm gonna go ahead and just ask or, or answer all four of these. Uh, so the first question is, what in life do you feel the most grateful? And so this is a really good question. So what am I most grateful for in life? And I think when it comes down to it, the one thing that I'm most grateful for in my life is my family. My family is the reason I am who I am today. They support me through anything and I support them. I wouldn't be here without my family. I mean, you have to think about it. Like, who are the two people that, like, brought you into this world? That's that's your parents. And my grandparents brought my parents into the world. So, you know, like, family is the one thing that I'm the most grateful for. Um, because they're always there. They always will be. And at the end of the day, they are truly the people that I can trust. Okay, Michael, going on to your second question. Tips on how to get bigger legs. So, how to get bigger legs. In regards to that, you have to just train them non-stop. I know there's gonna be guys like, I'm training my legs non-stop and it's just not working, they're just not growing. Okay, so here's how it works. With legs, what I found is that once I implemented squatting, everything changed. I actually have like stretch marks on my legs from them growing so fast. Also, calorie surplus. You gotta be eating a lot of food just to grow in general. So, eat lots of food and do squats. And when I say do squats, I say like do heavy squats, like program properly to where you're not, you know, trying to rep like your max, but like get at least like do like five reps and then try and do eight. I mean, there's a point where I was doing like 10, 12 reps on squats, like just squats, 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 you know? Like we all know that lower reps is for strength and higher reps is more for hypertrophy. So it's, it's really up to you, but I found gain on doing both, doing hypertrophy, doing um, more strength. You gotta do them both. At the end of the day, when, when you're a natural athlete, strength's your best friend, and then so is uh, hypertrophy, because they go together. So I, I, I recommend you know trying to go for strength on the squat, and then maybe like one day during the week, go for more like reps and go for more of like a pump. Um, but after every squat session, do like three to two hypertrophy movements. So I personally like to do heavy squats and then I go over and do like three or four sets of like 10 to 15 reps on the leg extension and leg curl. Now recently I've been doing a lot more cardiovascular stuff and doing a lot of conditioning work. So uh, I haven't really been doing that too much because I'm going over and doing farmer carries and I'm doing uh, like box jumps and lunges and sled pushes. So I'm doing a lot. But in regards to that, always add in hypertrophy at the end of your workout. If you wanna do it in the beginning, then go for it. Uh, strength seems to suffer after that, but at least for some. I've seen it happen, um, but up, it's really up to you. But that is what I re recommend for getting bigger legs. Squatting heavy and adding in hypertrophy. All right, next question from Michael is, do you have any tips on how to be confident while starting a conversation with a girl? I get this question a lot, and I think it's due to my aesthetics on a mangle thing. So in regards to girls, like how to be more confident in regards to talking to girls. At, at the end of the day, Confidence really is something that you exude and you you can truly just kind of like come in with it. And what I mean by that is you're not just born with it. Like 
it's from your upbringing. So it appears like you're just born with confidence, but really it's, no, that person was brought up in an environment to fuel that confidence. Now in regards to girls, confidence with girls, really if you're a confident person in general, then being around girls shouldn't be that hard. Now there are some instances where people just are really introverted. Like it's not like they're not a very confident person. They're just like, oh my God, people. Like, uh, you know what I mean? I mean, I have days where I'm like, oh God, people, like get away. I'm not like insecure about it or like unconfident. I'm just like, yo, I just need a fucking date of myself, right? So in regards to girls, it's like anything. If you're not confident with it, generally it's because you haven't done it a lot or you've had bad experience. With squatting, I remember I was nervous. I don't think I, I guess, you, I honestly can say I wasn't very confident at first with putting heavy weight on the bar. I was nervous, you know, I, it, it, it was new to me. But now I'm very confident with squatting and I can throw a bunch of heavy weight on there and now I even one rep max. Total gym example there, uh, it also goes along with girls. You gotta do it more. The more you do it, the more you'll mess up, the more you'll succeed. And in the end, you're not gonna be nervous anymore. You're gonna be confident and you'll, and you'll know exactly what to do. Okay, so Michael asked the same question, but do I have any tips on how to be more confident while approaching them? So starting a conversation and then approaching them. So as I said, for starting a conversation was just to just do it more. And approaching them is the same thing. It's not like you're asking me tips on what to say or tips on how to approach them. You're just asking me, hey, how do I be more confident when I do approach these girls? How do I be more confident when I do start a conversation? So, you know, in regards to that, like, just like I said, it just takes, re it takes repetition. You'll become confident in it and you'll become more secure in it as you do it more. You won't be so, um, you know, un unconfident or nervous about it because it'll become second nature. Now, since I did see that you, you were asking, you know, I did see you mention the word tips. In regards to certain conversations, it helps if, if you know the girl. Um, be funny, find any opportunity to compliment her um, from the neck up. Uh, you know, just be yourself. And that's really hard to hear, but at the end of the day, girls don't want to see somebody who's being somebody they're not. And you just, you just need to be you, dude. And show that you care, show that you're a caring person. You know, like, at the end of the day, a girl is gonna like you for you, so don't be afraid to show who you are. And if she doesn't like you, then it's not meant to be. You know what I mean? So just let it, just let it play out. Be, be cool. And uh, yeah, like I said, it helps if you know her, compliment her from the neck up. Be funny. Uh, try and find like, uh, you know, like interests. And don't be pushy. Don't don't be clingy or clingy. Uh, but be confident. Which you're asking how to be confident is well you. Fake it till you make it, you know? You're gonna have to just do it. And, cause girls like when a man is, I don't, I don't wanna say in charge because like there's a lot of girls now that are very independent and I don't wanna trigger anybody and be like, oh, you know, that's so misogynistic, you know, man in charge, no. But like girls like it when you're snappy, you know, when you grab the door, when you, when, when you act like, hey, like this is, this is me. Like, and you know, like, I got, like, I got you. Girls like to know like you, you, you got their back, that way they can have your back. All right, so we reached the final three questions here. So we got Ka Costan Zalorenzo, I think I said your name right. Upper slash lower or push-pull legs? Uh, definitely push-pull leg split by far. Upper lower is more so I feel for when you're traveling or you know you're not gonna be able to perform a full push-pull leg split. So I, I recommend doing push pull legs over upper lower and then when you are traveling or you are not going to be able to do your push pull leg split, then go for upper lower. The last question is AF Karina, benefits of being big and muscular. So um, and definitely is an interesting one because I've never really thought about it to be honest with you. Uh, when I was younger, I remember thinking like, oh, like I wonder, uh, how much lighter this box will be when I was at work and I was carrying a box I wonder how much lighter this box is gonna be and then like a year later or whatever I was like grabbing boxes and then and then the thought popped in my head and I was like damn like these boxes are like a lot lighter So, <laughs> you know like small stuff like that, but besides that I really haven't like thought about anything besides that in regards to um Benefits of being bigger and muscular in regards to it. I mean everyday life so like other tasks aren't as difficult like if you're gardening or you're 
doing like construction maybe if you work a construction job or any like physical activity or like manual labor is a lot easier or it can be more difficult actually because you're always freaking sore you know you, you have all these muscles and you can't even freaking use them most for the most part but yeah I mean besides that um some fits is I guess people kind of look at you different, which I think um, it, it makes sense because you know being big and muscular is not a very norm thing. I mean, the obesity thing in America is out of it's just off the charts, and it's only getting worse. And the the, the percentage of people with heart disease and everything is just going to be crazy by like you know like 2025 or 2030. So. You know, honestly, like I think it's, you know, I guess like a benefit would just be that you get people's attention. It's great. I remember back when I did um, Perks of Aesthetics, I, I talked about how um, it creates relationships or something like that because uh, about being aesthetic. Now, I guess being big and muscular kind of falls in that same category would be that, yeah, like you, you get people's attention. So you're, it's like you can start conversations easier, say if you're at a party and some guy's like, bro, you're freaking huge and you're just like, hey, you know, and then it just starts like that, you know, so. It's just like something to add to like your repertoire. It's something that just, it's like a part of you. And um, I'm not gonna say it's a skill. Being muscular is not a skill. It doesn't, it's not like, oh, I'm so this or that. Uh, but it does display traits of uh, follow through, discipline, uh, you know, just the ability to be confident enough in yourself to go and say, hey, like, you obviously knew that you wanted to make a change to yourself, which makes you able to look at yourself and say, hey, like I wanna make a change, which takes confidence in your decision of your view of yourself that you may have thought that you need improvement or like I said, change. So yeah, it, it exudes a lot. I guess there's a lot of um, mental first impression type image stuff that comes with it, but I never really think about that. So thank you for asking. And yeah, you kind of gave me some more insights on myself. We've reached the final question, and it's coming from uh, Mikip00. I don't know if I said your name right. Uh, and this is thoughts on push pull legs. Now, I just answered this in comparison to upper lower push pull legs. I do it, I think it's fantastic. I think for somebody who likes to train every body part twice a week, who enjoys being in the gym six days a week, I think it's perfect. Now, for somebody who is just starting out, it might be a little taxing because your body might not be recovered in time because look at it this way. It's Monday, it's legs, so it's gonna be legs and then push, pull, and then, so you get one, two, and then on the third day, on the third day when it comes to Thursday, it's time to train. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then boom, legs again. If you don't do it right on your push, pull, legs, like if you don't, you know, structure your training the right way and know when to stop, there's days that I forget to and I'm sore and then I can't train. So that sucks and you have to really know your body, know your limits because it is a very demanding split. You're in the gym six days a week and the only day off you get is generally you're gonna be sore the whole day. So there's never a time when you're not sore if you're training a certain way. And what I mean by that is you know, you shouldn't train to be sore if you're going for strength. They say you should just train and do the strength. And if you're sore, then you overtrain, blah, blah, blah. Either way, guys, I personally like to be a little sore after my workouts. So if you are going to do that like I do, you have to know when to stop. That way I know I'll be sore for two days, not three. Because if I'm too sore, then I can't train. And at the end of the day, that's defeating the purpose. So if, 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 if that makes sense, um, I think it's a great split, but for somebody starting out, they seriously need to learn quick because I personally did four days on, three days off when I started, and then I went to a five day on, two day off, and then, um, yeah, and then I, eventually I arrived at push pull legs, and that's where I'm at. All the questions, guys. The sun has left us throughout this Q&A, so that shows you how long I've been sitting here. It's been about 23 minutes, but I have never done that before. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. I, I, I genuinely enjoyed doing that. I think I'm gonna do this a lot more because a lot of you all came out and asked a lot of questions, and you know, it was really awesome. Like, I'm very grateful, so thank you all so much. All of you who went ahead and did this, I, I for the bottom of my heart, I thoroughly appreciate it. Thank you all so much. And um, yeah, so I plan to do this a lot more, like I said. In regards to videos going forward, I am indeed in a different room, as you guys can see. That's because I now have an office set up uh, directly across from my room. So I'm gonna be definitely crunching away. It's, it's summertime for me, and last summer, 
I made a pact with myself that I would do YouTube the whole summer and then if it didn't work out, I'd go back to school. Well, the whole summer, it just didn't work out. Um, I fell in love with a girl and I definitely had a lot of fun. I just, I just enjoyed being in love and I um, spent time with her and I'm, I'm not blaming her by any means at all. I'm just saying like, I didn't focus on YouTube. I, I, I found my girlfriend at the time and family and friends and this and that. And you know, I had a few good videos that happened as well, but for the most part, I did not upload as much as I wanted to. So this time around, because I now finished my, uh, I finished my two years in college and I'm trying to decide if I want to go back or not. I'm not really feeling like I want to because I picked up acting and modeling and this company I'm with, they are marketing me and it's doing really well guys. I got invited to literally the biggest modeling and acting gig in the world. It, it, it takes place in New York and LA. It's called IMTA. It's huge, like 500 um, scouts and uh, agents are all there all at once like it's a big deal and I got invited to that so there's big things happening with life I'm excited this summer to really just like enjoy the weather enjoy the acting the modeling and enjoy just doing YouTube the way that I wanted to do it and uh, I'm not gonna say anything else because I have a tendency that if I say something I don't do it so uh, just watch just watch me okay just watch it's gonna be a good time Thank you all so much once again for this, and I will see you guys in the next video.